So we woke up really bright and early this morning in Singapore. We've just been on a ferry ride that was about half an hour and now we're actually in Indonesia. And now from here we're heading to the airport to get on a seaplane to go to Bawa. And I'm so excited to head to Bawa because we've heard so many awesome things about it and I'm just like, I can't wait to actually see it. We're gonna go have like lunch in a treetop restaurant and things like that. So I'm pretty keen for lunch. <laughs> so we're at Hong Na Dim Airport, which is in Batam Island. Um, it's still in Indonesia, but we've never actually been here before, so it's pretty interesting to see. We've been to Indonesia so many times, we're basically only Bali. So now we're getting a tiny glimpse into what the rest of Indonesia is like. I literally just googled Indonesia on the map, and I realised there's so much of the country that we haven't seen. Yeah. So I don't think we should go back to Bali ever again until we've seen like <laughs> a, a, at least other parts of Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> About halfway through that video, I was like, oh, there's no one else on this plane other than you and me. I was thinking, okay, so painter lines, belay clips, life rafts. Okay, got it. That psyched you out, didn't it? That safety briefing video. I mean, I just never realised there was so much to consider. This probably happens with the air hostesses on a regular plane. But because we haven't got any air hostesses on here, if, um, for example, we have to use the emergency exit door. Mm -hmm. There's a protocol that you have to learn. Don't worry, if anything ever happened, I would I would just have to oh, rescue I you. I already know in my head that you'd be passed out. I'm driving, so please buckle up. We're gonna do the Top Gun thing and we're gonna buzz the lagoon prior to landing. And that's about all I got for you. It's a nice weather, so it should be no drama. Have you seen how blue this ocean is? Or how clear it is? Alright, this one, is this us? I, yep, well I'm getting in. Okay, cool. Well I must admit, I'm starting to get very used to this seaplane golf buggy life. <laughs> Me too! <laughs> I think we need to upgrade our vehicles. <laughs> Wow. This is so beautiful. Look at this. Wait, oh. can you go straight into the ocean? Yeah. Oh. oh, oh, oh. All right. After you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Here's the open. Oh. Open That's the wardrobe and the curtains are just blowing in the wind. Yeah, this, this is like open. So we're just going to work out what we're doing for the, for the week. He is really struggling with the way that the time has changed. Well, because my, my clock hasn't updated already. What did you do before iPhone changed automatically? I don't know, I was like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a time zone that the iPhone doesn't quite recognise as correct, so it's one hour behind, it's completely thrown off Pia's brain. 6am <laughs> in the morning, check this view. Tripod, drone, hat, camera, bag. We're ready. All right, I've got my drone and I've got my camera. I've got my vlog camera and I've got my wife. <laughs> We're going for a breakfast picnic and we don't know where, but I don't think this is just any old picnic. I think it's there. <gasps> I think so too. So we actually arrived here last night or yesterday afternoon. We had a bit of a chill and then we had dinner with some friends here um, so we didn't really vlog anything so today is now the next day in the vlog. For some reason I'm super tired this morning and it's already like nine o'clock but I think a little bit of coffee and like breakfast will probably perk me up. Nothing to do with the red wine last night. Yeah red wine. I don't normally drink red wine. 
So here at Bawa, there are a bunch of other islands around it, which are still part of the resort. And they're pretty much like deserted islands. So I think the plan this morning with the picnic is that we're going to fly over there and have like an entire island to ourselves. To I don't know if we fly, I think we boat. Oh yeah, boat, sorry, yeah. boat. It's like, you could probably swim. That's how close it is. But obviously we'll, we'll catch a boat. The lagoon looks really cool because it's so shallow and such white sand here. It's got that really, really bright turquoise blue color in mm. between all the islands. So it looks really amazing. I think a seaplane lands here twice per day. Mm. So I've just got to make sure that it's not that time now. And then I can fly my drone because Oh yeah, that's I don't want right. to cause <laughs> don't want to cause an accident. <laughs> <laughs> Should probably find out what time zone it is. Yeah. How's that for a view? Wow. I think Cody Co would be very impressed with this vlog. So all of these bits that you're seeing here, that's actually coral and later on we'll go in with the GoPro and show you there are fish everywhere. Is this a fast boat? Oh, yeah, right. This is the way to travel. Deck that chair on that. a speedboat. <laughs> I cannot describe how blue this is. This is just fluorescently clean blue seawater. It's incredible. Okay, so we've arrived at our deserted island. Day bed's in there. I'm not wearing a swimsuit right now, but I brought one because I figured this might be a good opportunity for a swim. I'm gonna fly my drone. This is drone gold. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. I can't believe we have this. I feel like we're on Survivor having having brunch. Did you bring a swimsuit, babe? Uh, I mean, I'm wearing these shorts, but they could go see-through. They definitely will. Last, <laughs> last time we were in, we were in Fraser Island, do you remember? Yeah. And I wore white shorts, and every time I went in any water, any ocean or anything like that, they went completely see-through. <laughs> And it wasn't until the last day that someone, like another one of the guests, told me. And we were travelling with 40 other people on a bus. And then the last day they were like, you know your shorts are completely see-through. And I've just been like flashing everyone for five days. Everyone thought you were smuggling a sea cucumber. <laughs> From here you've got another island right there, yeah. which you can actually hike, but I think it's really hard to get up those rocks. I think that is very deceptively massive. Yeah. Like it looks quite close, but that is huge. Yeah, it's enormous. When you can see how tiny the trees are, it puts in perspective how big those big rocks are. Yeah. I like this handy top. Okay. Then just press here. Then I will come back around 12 because if more the yep. around 12, it's just a uh, very, very low tide. Yes. Then the boat cannot go here. Okay. So we have a walkie talkie because we are actually now on this deserted island by ourselves. <laughs> so if we need to get off here or figure out, you know, if some sort of emergency situation happens, we have a walkie talkie to get in contact with the team. Ro Roger that. <laughs> Over. I think this is my one. Um, because I asked for Indonesian breakfast. Oh, this looks like a dessert of oh, some wow. sort. Oh wow, what is that? I think that's a dessert. Oh yeah, yeah this is okay. definitely so the, dessert the dessert basket. Pile. We had this last night, it's called gado gado. Is that right? Yeah, it's Indonesian vegetables with like a peanutty sauce. It's, it's so it's good. It's basically satay sauce and broccoli. Yes! It is so tasty, I, it can't be healthy. It's so yum. Okay, I'm gonna steal some of that. No, 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 that's mine. <laughs> Definitely mine. I'm gonna put the camera down so I can enjoy my date breakfast on this deserted island <laughs> with my whippet.
we demolished that in record time. Yeah. I hope I haven't got food in my teeth. Um, this island has True. a, I think the guest capacity on this island is 61. I think no, it's in the 70s. 71, mm. maybe. I can't remember. It was not many. It's like a, it's a really nice small island, so it's never overcrowded. And because the the villas and the houses are, are spread so far out, um, you very rarely bump into someone, which is also very nice. So at dinner, for example, last night there was only, at the time we went, there was only eight people actually eating at that point. Mm. Um, and we, one of the one of the guys there was like, "Hey, do you want to join us for dinner? Because we're just gonna." invite everyone that's here right now to sit around a big circular table and as it turned out that guy was the owner of this island so that was really fun to talk to him and there was another guy on the table who kept talking about headphones and speakers and he kept bringing up Bang & Olufsen as a brand <laughs> about an hour later we all knew by the way that he was the chairman of Bang & Olufsen about an hour into the meal Pia goes do you work for Bang & Olufsen or something because you're talking about it a lot I was like, oh babe. I did not pick up on that. And, no. and like throughout the conversation, he was like talking about the headphones and everything. I was like, yeah, I love my AirPods. Normally when we go away, we sit on our own or not, not on purpose, but like because we travel as a couple, it's not like we're going to a Contiki trip where there's 50 other people that want to hang out. Like mm. typically couples keep themselves when we travel. Um, so it's great, I don't mind that, but it was actually quite refreshing to be in a situation where you just got invited to another table and said, hey, should we have dinner together mm. and just learn about each other. So Yeah, it was really interesting, really mm. nice conversation, really like unique group of people. A and different, a varied group of people. Yeah, a very varied group of people. So it's nice because you learn a lot from other people's like perspectives and stuff like that. I think we should do that from now on. What? If invite people to join us? Yeah, it was a kind of, it was weird. I've never, I'll be honest, I've never done that before. I've never just gone up to someone in a, in a hotel restaurant and said, hey, we're going to get together a few people. Do you want to join us? Yeah. And just chat. But I think I might. I might try that. Totally. It was really nice. So yeah, cheers to making new friends. Cheers. To now feeling a little dusty from too much red wine. Oh, I just spilled this. What is wrong with me? It's been a really interesting honeymoon, actually. What we did when we planned it is we, we tried to make sure that every resort we went to uh, had an eco-friendly mission statement. So, for example, Suniva, they don't use single-use plastics, and they were actually working with the Maldivian government to eradicate single-use plastic bags and things like that. In Sri Lanka, we saw the efforts that the Resplendent are making with children. They've actually got, I think, 15 or 16 schools, like the one we went to a few days ago, mm. um, across the country. And they're using the profits from holiday makers like us to fund, I think, 10% of the money goes towards helping kids that may not be able to afford to go to primary school or get that early learning education, mm. giving them the, the resources they need to kind of become more successful adults. And here we've got a similar ethos with Bawa, because you don't see any single-use plastics, they're cleaning up the oceans, and what they're doing here is they're teaching local people diving courses, because oh, yeah. diving, yeah, because diving makes you obviously a lot more conscious about the environment, because you don't want to see rubbish when you're diving. Mm. So they're actually giving people qualifications so that they can take other guests or tourists on diving adventures, and they're giving local women jobs, and um, yeah, I guess just an all-round initiative to, what do they call it? Orca. Above, below and beyond. Yes, above, below and beyond. If you work on the island, you can become a tank boy for a diver and intern with them, I guess, for a while until mm. you become good enough and then you can start taking guests out. You can train as a fully qualified diver. And I think seeing it firsthand and seeing what you can do and what, what, what humans have done and what you can do to fix the ocean is really educational. And if the local people know that, everything changes. Yeah, I'm really proud of the, the results that we chose for the honeymoon. Mm. I, um, I'm really like proud to support them. I feel like the world has taken a bit of a turn where these luxury resorts are obviously, you know, huge industries within these small islands. Like tourism is basically a huge industry, especially in the Maldives. It's, it's, the, it's the only industry, exactly. really. Exactly, and so these resorts are kind of taking it upon themselves to make these missions for their countries because they have to educate. Well, I mean, the future of their business will suffer otherwise exactly. as well. So there is a there is a monetary goal there, but it's it's nice that they've looked at it and gone, we don't need, we, we're charging a premium rate for these holidays so we can take a chunk of that money, put it back in to the planet mm. and actually make the planet better. Yeah. It'd be nice if more corporations did that. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, our beach picnic has come to an end. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I just walked around and like <laughs> moved the lens. I could just up. see that it wasn't going to be a good shot. <laughs> so we're packing up and we're heading back to the island. And the next thing we're doing is snorkeling. Oh and no! <laughs> I'm seriously thinking that maybe I'll take a kayak and then just like dip the GoPro in the water and pretend <laughs> pretend that I'm snorkeling. I think that might be a good idea. You can't do that. We're being dropped to our villa by the boat and there's little stairs that go up to our overwater villa and we're just gonna like jump up those stairs and get in. <laughs> it's house number 31. This is like the best version of Uber I've ever had. <laughs> just reversing up to our house right now. This is like the equivalent of driving into the garage. Yeah. Success! <laughs> Thank you! Thank you so much! Okay, that was cool. That was really cool. I love this. This is something I want to do at home. Take a cold like face towel, or take a face towel, dip it in water, and then just put it in the fridge. It gets so hot in Australia and I never know how to cool down like in a refreshing way. Oh, that's so nice. I'm just going to roll up a five of these, put them in the fridge. This isn't this. meant to be for your face, it's meant to be for your hands. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, I like it on my head. It does feel refreshing on your head though, doesn't it? Yes. You join us at a critical moment in Pia's life. We're about to reveal to Pia how to get rid of bubbles from Coca-Cola. Why would you want that? Because bubbles, they hurt my throat. That stings a bit, doesn't it? So I've asked the lovely lady to bring me some salt. Here we go. Salt is here. And you can see this has a lot of bubbles, right? Oh. Are you ready? Watch this. So you're gonna make flat Coca-Cola? Well, it... That's your trick. <laughs> <laughs> it does it quickly. Okay, here we go. Watch. Salt goes in, fizzes a bit, mix it around, and it bubbles lots. See that, it's going nuts. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, all the bubbles are coming out. <laughs> it doesn't really make it much worse tasting. <laughs> Now you can see, all the bubbles have gone. And you can drink it real quick. Beautiful. 